It was a dark and stormy night. It was 1921. There were witches in those days. Real ones. Not these modern-day posers. Tons and tons of witches. Witches like you couldn't believe. Like, oh my god, there were so many witches. Anyway, it was the beginning of the Roaring Twenties, and football was ascendant. A rivalry was brewing in the Midwest. To the south, the Ohio Western University Ospreys. To the north, the Southern Michigan University Robins. And the Lake Huron University Webbed Wonders. It was called the Triangle of Hate. Oddly shaped triangle but a triangle nonetheless. The stars were endless. Raymond, Two-Toed, O'Flannery, Hurley, stick em up mugs, Arrow, the Barrel, Carson, but perhaps none moved the needle more than Ohio Western's head coach, Ethelwood Elcock. Ethelwood was a marriage man in that Teddy Roosevelt mold. He fought in the Spanish-American War, went on spires, all kinds of crazy stuff. He even lamented that football wasn't dangerous enough. But when Coach Elcock spoke, people listened. Coach Elcock spent most of the 1910s being dominated by Amos Spurgeon of Southern Michigan and C. Vorky of Lake Huron, with Elcock finishing third each season. Things began to turn around in 1916 with Ohio Western's first ever conference title and national championship. His success, due in large part to a then unknown assistant, E.B. Banky. Elcock would win the next four conference titles thanks to Banky's innovation on offense. A shy, withdrawn man, Banky operated in the shadows. Banky thought the key to his success in football was due to the supernatural. He held seances with all the right people. He was a shifty man, never taught much. But he really modernized the game with the forward pass in ways that people hadn't seen before. Banky credited his success to a 2,000-year-old manual from the Middle East titled Kitab al-Asrar, or The Book of Secrets, and he would then disappear, sometimes for weeks, into the woods. Banky grew up jealous of Elcock's trips to the White House to meet figures such as Warren G. Harding and Douglas Fairbanks. He left Ohio Western abruptly in 1921. He would then move north to a small town called Alpena, Michigan. He worked with the local YMCA there and convinced administrators of a tiny teacher's college to begin a football program. And the rest, they say, is history. You see, Banky succeeded in his first season at Alpena Teachers College, knocking off Ohio Western 9-6. Elcock fumed, but the real challenge would be toppling Southern Michigan and Lake Huron. The 1922 game between Southern and Huron was electric. Both teams undefeated. The skies opened up. The rain poured. Lake Huron and Southern Michigan lost their captains and ten players, each to injury in the hurricane-like conditions. Ankles, tibias, femurs. Doctors treating the injuries discovered bones they didn't even know about. Coaches called on players from the intramural rowing team from the student section to finish the game. One of those rowers, Eugene P. Gilhouse of Southern Michigan, broke into the open field with three minutes left to play. He saw the end zone. Open. Totally clear. Suddenly, as he approached the five-yard line, a bolt of lightning struck the uprights. Gilhouse flinched. The wet ball spurted and slipped through his flailing hands. As the ball bounced on the ground, Gilhouse kicked it through the back of the end zone. Touchback. After a delay, a Lake Huron 20-yard field goal attempt with one second left went wide right, claiming off the post as kicker Ronald McGillicuddy slipped on the turf. The game ended in a nothing-nothing tie. The door was now open for the Alpena Teachers College to shock the world and win the conference title outright. Coach C. Forky, a spiritual man, was convinced of witchcraft. From this point forward, Alpena's luck never never ended. Southern Michigan would lose to Alpena after team captain and coach's son, Amos Spurgeon II, was stricken with plague. Lake Huron would forfeit after their team train derailed hours away from kickoff. Against Alpena, Ohio Western found themselves down 5-0 in the fourth quarter. On their fourth and goal play, Coach Alcock called on his go-to passing play, the one the former assistant, Banky, invented. The receiver was wide open. Alpena was totally fooled. However, the football began deflating in midair as it traveled to the wide open man and dropped straight down. It was magic for the alpacas. Or was it something darker. Borky and Spurgeon knew of Coach Benke's communion with the dark arts and threatened to spill it all to the papers. But that's when the incident happened. On December 1st, 1922, Lake Huron's main campus center was consumed by flames and mere hours later, Southern Michigan's main building collapsed. Thankfully, class was out of session and there were no casualties, but the incident rocked both communities. The official cause? A bad gas line and faulty construction. But Forky and Spurgeon understood the message and dropped the matter entirely. If you ask Coach Benke, he would tell you it was luck. A bounce of the ball or cruel twist of fate. If you ask the witches, those who really know, they would tell you of a 100 hundred year curse that would destroy the hopes and dreams of those programs. Ohio Western would plug away, but beginning in 1970, the Ospreys would embark on a 50 plus year conference title drought with Alpena winning most of them. For Southern Michigan and Lake Huron, the bad luck would continue. They began cheating just to keep up, and both were awarded the death penalty. After reigniting their football programs in 2020, they were determined to break the curse and get revenge on the dastardly deeds of E.B. Benke and the hideous aftermath.
What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Team Builder on the channel. Oh, it's back. Woohoo! With dual commentary. Yeah, it has been so long since you and I have been able to do this. And you know what? I am so, so excited about this series. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. We have two programs here that are cursed, apparently. Mm -hmm. And we have a big bad guy and a team that is benefited from some of those misdeeds. Ohio Western, but maybe they can rejuvenate their program and topple the bad guy themselves without our help. That's kind of why this is going to be a really fun series. Yeah, and the fun thing about this series, what's going to make this very unique to the NCAA 14 community is that we're going to be placing on ourselves some restrictions as far as recruiting goes, as far as play calling goes. I mean, we are really trying to dive into this and make this very, very difficult. I mean, we're talking about a 100-year curse here that we've got to we got to figure out how to break that. Yeah, well, both of our programs, we have Lake Huron, Southern Michigan. They have restarted their programs. They got one year of provisional football in. They're playing Division Three teams, NAIA, but now they are in the big leagues. This is our first season back as an FBS team, and we're going to suck, and we're going to talk about <laughs> how bad we suck momentarily. All right, so what do you say we dive into the coaching staffs, the rosters, and all the rules and restrictions that are going to be in place? Let's do it. Now we're going to start here with my team, Lake Huron. Bear Kegger is our head coach. He's went to the Army. He obviously needs to go back to boot camp by the looks of things. But <laughs> he is a disciplinarian, and he's going to have to get the most out of our team because they're not very good. Chet Banky Jr. is the great grandson of Evie Banky. His dad, Chet Banky, just retired. A successful 25-year run at Alpina. This is his moment to shine. Yeah, and you know what? When you're a Banky, you're using the dark arts. And I can see already he's got he's changing his age already. On the fly? Well, mm -hmm. you can do that when you do the things that his family has done. Shea Rolovich going to be the Ohio Western head coach. He's 47, offensive-minded head coach from Ohio State. He used to play out there. So he's coming back home to Ohio, try to get the job done out there. Now, Daniel Risby, our head coach here at Southern Michigan from Washington, 40 years old. He used to play rugby. He's from Australia, so he understands the ruggedness of American football. He'll get it done for us. Keneal Mason, our offensive coordinator, Hunter Banky out at Alpena. Yeah, he's the brother of one of the bankies there. Emery Wilkins at Ohio Western, and then Brian Street, the OC at Lake Huron. Look at Malcolm R. Boudreau, the defensive Ooh. coordinator for Alpina. Look at his gear there. He's an Ohio Western alum, actually. And Martin Ryvik, DC for Lake Huron. And then the last couple here, Reagan Hawker for Ohio Western, aptly named. And, of course, Matt Moore here for the Southern Michigan. Robbins is our defensive coordinator now. Taking a look at the conferences here, we got Southern Michigan in the West. They're paired up with Western, Eastern, Central, all the directional schools. And for the East, we'll have Lake Huron, Alpena. So Alpena is going to be the heavyweight, lowly Lake Huron, who knows, but it's going to be a competitive conference. The West is definitely going to be tougher, but I love the Mac. I'm looking forward to the way this is set up. What do you think about Lake Huron's roster? Because that's what we're going to be talking about next is each team's roster. Well, well, I want to ask you that. What do you think about your team, Lake Huron, here? It's it's dicey. We got a, a couple good players, but mostly garbage. I don't know. <laughs> you're in the same boat. You're a little bit better than me on paper right now, I feel like, but you're also a lot older, so I don't know how that's going to play out. And you're yeah, you're exactly right. We are older in some positions. Some of our offensive pieces are senior laden. De definitely defensive. Defensively speaking, we are senior laden there too. So we've got a couple 80s in there sprinkled around. You do twos. Give ourselves a chance at least because these rosters are so bad. But it's going to be fun talking about these guys. We're going to be moving here pretty quick. We're going to start with Southern Michigan here. You can see from the quarterback room, we were younger after Dontrell Jack. It's going to be interesting to see how we utilize like Nico Phillips in there, a young guy. CJ Switzer, our running back. We're going to be mostly involved with the running game but a guy we need to focus on in the thumbnail cody gatling our wide, a star wide receiver yeah but he's a senior so is he actually going to help you win games this year i don't know but he's got good hands and he's a good route runner too he's basically jordy nelson or wayne for bay perhaps but yeah as a senior that's a tough deal a guy that i really want you guys to focus on daz mabry webb our slot receiver eventually going to be a guy that takes over the x and y positions Another couple guys, tight ends were really good there. Hendershot and Ali, guys that I'm going to focus on as well. Short passing game. 
Messier is a pretty decent center for this team at 64 overall, but everybody else, you can see it, it's not good. We got 40s starting here. I mean, it's it's not good, guys. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Shaquille St. Brown, big DT. And then we, of course, have Chase Landon, a guy I'm going to focus on a little bit later down the road. But this is a player, at least for this year, we need to focus on here is Barry. Keyshawn Barry, number 99, captain of the defense. Looks like he's got a nose for the football. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, as far as outside linebackers, we don't have a lot of speed there. But Scroggins and Underhill, our cornerbacks, will be a part of the return game. we got Zalamander at safety, Percy Gant, Nick Tartable. Not much of a difference there between each player, but, man, is it? Uh, it's going to be a struggle here in the future of this, of this team. Now, Let's talk about the schedules. Yeah, you're going to open against Middle Tennessee State. And then look who you get next at the uh, th That's a problem. That's that's a big problem because you'll see it once we start talking about that roster. But, man, and then we got to go at Florida State. Look at the ats right there. That's uh, four ats in a row. Six ats in a row. We have six weeks where we are not at home. That's a tough deal, man. That's very, very tough. Now let's talk about... The Lake Huron Web Wonders, our best player there, Nick Nemus Bloodsaw. But Izzy Fonseca, the freshman quarterback, he can roll the pocket. He's got a good release. I like what he can bring to the table. Pocket awareness, though, is a problem, as we see here in the spring and, game. Yeah, and just the fact that he's so young, you see him here, he's not being a good leader. He's calling people out. Not a good deal. But he is a freshman, so a lot of potential. Q Sean Chambers is our top running back. I call him One Yard Q Sean. <laughs> Tank Stugelmeyer, he's a big fullback, but our superstar on offense is Othello Doubleday, who was a top recruit, but he didn't have the grades to go into some of these better schools, so he had to settle for Lake Huron. He's going to play football here, and we're going to see how he does because he's got the size. Yeah, I was just going to say, he's definitely got the size. He looks like a guy that's going to be uh, a, a force at the wide receiver position. Yeah. Um, and we have Daihoon Bay, a walk-on freshman wide receiver a holding grabowski at left tackle great name mm -hmm. for left tackle a lot of penalties i'm thinking uh, hopefully not we'll see though guillermo escalante look, I mean, look how bad our, our offensive line is just not good and you know fonseca is going to be on the receiving end of a lot of those hits defensive line too also not very big not very strong so that is a big weakness for this team I mean, look at Sir Kyle Washington. Not not very good. 54 overall. He's not bringing it. Nicodemus Bloodsaw, though. He's an Alabama transfer. He got kicked out of Alabama. Nick Saban didn't want him around because he was injuring players in practice. He was, like, bounty gate. Bad. Okay. All right. And so so he, he is – he wants to destroy people. And that's why we want him here. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting strategy there. Got a lot of linebackers. What's the deal with this? He's just swapping guys in and out? I don't know. We just, we just take whoever looks like they could put on some pads and play football. But we got Walker, Edding, Grissom, and Nickelberry. I can't call this a strength, but, you know, they're okay. They'll it's, do for right now. It's relative. Dustin Papadopoulos, he's a 68, but he's not very strong. You know, he might get thrown around a lot. There's our superstar right there, Jacopo D'Andrea Matteo of wow, Italy. Wow, wow, wow. Now, our schedule here, we're opening at Ohio State. We play a good Texas San Antonio team. We get in the max schedule. It's a little dicey. We got you in uh, week seven, so I like that. We play Alpina week 12, so I'm looking forward to that matchup. I think we can beat Akron if I had to pick one team. All right, let's talk about Ohio Western, and then we'll get to Alpina. But here's my dude, Louis Savage. If you guys watched the American Team Builder Dynasty, this is a throwback player with a throwback name. Louis Savage, the running back here for OWU. He is going to be a star. He's going to be a stud for this team. But this is kind of a team that is kind of the 1B to Alpina in this MAC division. So watch out for Ohio Western. they got a lot of depth at wide receiver, as you can see. Tight end, a little bit weak on that side, 70s and high 60s. But, you know, relatively, according to the MAC overall, rating-wise, they're, they're decent. They're pretty good. They're going to be top of the class for sure with yeah. Alpina. Yeah, they'll, they'll give Alpina a fight. But there's also going to be some teams in the West Division of the MAC, like Central Michigan, Northern Illinois, Toledo, who could give Ohio Western problems. So there's a chance of that, too. 
A uh, good linebacker core here. Definitely. With I like Kas- what we With Hala, Halafihi and Kasango. Two guys right. that are uh, coming internationally over here, too. So they've got some recruiting chops. But a guy that I want to focus on here, too, outside of Louis Savage, was Leandro Dyson. This guy will be one of the top picks in the NFL draft. And he is a hard-hitting safety with a lot of concentration drops. He can get back there and cover, but, man, he's just he's just more of that run support type of safety. Knows how to hit, knows how to tackle. That's kind of his strong suit. And he's the best player in our series. Let's check out the schedule here. They're going to open up against North Texas. They go at Coastal Carolina at Notre Dame. So it's a pretty challenging non-conference schedule. And then they open MAC play against the Alpina Alpacas in week number six. And then they close out with you. Yeah, they get Eastern, Western, Central. Interesting little matchup there. Three straight weeks. All right, Alpina. All right, we're going to start off with Christian Kemp Jr. He's got Kevin Gransky right behind him. Gransky is the big prospect. Calypso Barry Hill. He's a good runner. He's a good receiver. So he can do a lot of things out of the backfield. They're going to run, like I don't want to say like a total spread option offense, but they do feature that quite a bit. And Jamario Jett will be their top wide receiver. Wide receivers aren't as strong, but you see how young they are. Sophomore, freshman, freshman, and then mm-hmm. sophomore. So yep. they're going to be a problem for years to come. Yeah, so I expect with Gransky moving in, their passing game is going to get better, I think, as the series moves on. Tanner Van Cleek is a very good tight end. Senior. Look out for XP Gilchrist coming up at the back end. Um, the offensive line, pretty strong here for Alpina, especially when you're talking like Mac level. You know, this is a team that is thinks that this could be the year that they make the playoffs. They're, they're like the Gonzaga, Boise State kind of deal. They've been good for a long time. They think this is finally it because they have the horses like this guy, Prince Ebo, a 6'6 defensive end. Look at how he can just get low and then oh. lay out people, man. I mean, even the, even the stances he takes, it's just... This guy is going to be a top NFL draft pick, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. And he might even come back. He might be that thirsty for a national championship or a playoff appearance for the Alpacas. Defensive tackle might be a little bit of a weakness. Strickland's good. I mean, he's a freshman. So anytime you're an 80 freshman, they're asking, they're going to ask him to move in right away and be a big-time contributor. Uh, the secondary is pretty solid. Grimes, Waterbury, Reed. Yeah, you're not you're not passing on that. You know? <laughs> Faisal Al Sharif, he's young. It might be the weakest starter there, but Clink Scales at safety also very good. And then the kicking game is strong too. Schwartzlander and Moeller. Now let's check out the schedule. They are going to open up against Penn State, and then obviously they play you, Charlotte, and then they go at Wisconsin. So they got two Big Ten teams on the slate. If they're going to go to the playoff, those are the marquee games that they need to win. They Correct. should roll through the MAC. You know, maybe you look at Ohio Western, Kent State, perhaps. Uh, Other than that, uh, they should win that pretty easily. All right, let's talk now about the custom recruits that are going to be able to be recruited here in year number one. So just as an FYI, all of year one has been played. It's been recorded. We are done with year number one. We will talk to you guys that are just watching this here and now about what the process is of how you get your players into this series for year two. So these are year one patron players. They get in, they get special treatment because they're paying, they're donating. We'll talk about all that in more detail the longer we go. And it's going to be fun with all the restrictions. That's what I'm most excited to talk about. So these Patreon guys, like, killing me softly, me softly. There's only so many guys that are going to be able to contribute to our teams this season. So if your guy does not end up on Lake Huron or Southern Michigan, they are going to be in the MAC. So you guys get to see them every week, hopefully. So let's talk about the rules here. Yep. So for custom prospects, patrons, if you are a patron, you have the opportunity to get one prospect every season that we do this. What's also not included in this slide is that it's not only tied to one specific series. So if you want to become a patron and you want to get players for the other series that are running the channel, that's also allowed. Now, as you see the second note here, amount of donation is tied to a patron tier, and this will determine the player's overall rating. So here's your custom prospect breakdown by tier. $20 patrons will get a 75 overall, $10 will get 70, so on and so forth. It's a lowered overall, the lower your dollar amount. But here's where the fun part is. If you would like to be recruited by us, and we do sign you, then you will become nerfed. 
nerfed, meaning you get your attributes downgraded. So you will have the choice of saying, do I want to be recruited by Alpina or Buffalo or Akron? Or would you like us to enter the sweepstakes? If we do catch you though, <laughs> then you will be downgraded to an appropriate level to keep the series competitive and interesting. The, the plus though, is that you get to be on our team. You get to watch your guy played every week. And like you just said, the whole premise of this is not to negate the dollar amount that you're paying or you're donating to this channel and this cause. It's supposed to make sure that the series it stays intact. The goal of the series is to make sure that we don't get good, too good too fast. And so AA 14, everyone knows you can take the worst program in the world and turn them into a powerhouse by year three. We don't want that to happen. We want this thing in the long haul. We want this thing to be something that is deep, is, a, is immersive, and gives us a challenge. And I think you guys that are viewing this will have a lot of fun with it, watching the grind, so to speak. So if you'd like to become a prospect in this series, but not do it through the Patreon avenue, we'll be having a once per season prospect giveaway. This is gonna be a contest that's gonna be awarding the top five winners in that contest, but again, it's season long. More details to come on this a little bit later in the series. Now for the really, really fun part, recruiting rules. Years one through three, we got Lake Huron and Southern Michigan. We can only recruit one star prospects, excluding Patreon prospects. There's no JUCOs, no transfers either. So we can't get rich quick here, guys, all right? The prospects must be from bordering states, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Minnesota. Yes, Michigan does have water boundaries with Illinois and Minnesota, <laughs> so they count. And then even Ontario, so Canadians were open to Canadian players as well. Now as an added rule here, we can only sign one year one custom prospect. I'll say it again, because there's a lot of ones being thrown around. We can only sign one Patreon custom prospect that's on the recruiting board for year one. This is called a culture builder player. We can only get one of these. This player has no nerf involved in his overall. This is to kind of get the engine started a little bit. This is trying to get your culture built. You're rebuilding a program. You're trying to break a 100 year curse. You got to have a guy that you can lean on. Now moving past year one, in year two and year three, we can sign up to four custom prospects. These prospects, if we get four, doesn't matter how many we get, could get one, two, three, doesn't matter. These will be nerfed in overall rating. Yeah, so there's a 10 point deduction from their true overall to the overall if they land with our team. And again, you guys do have the option if you wanna be recruited by us, if you wanna be good somewhere else, you can have that option, we won't infringe on that exactly if you wanted to go be a quarterback as a 75 overall quarterback freshman for miami of ohio by go, all means yeah go be good somewhere else not here you can kill us in gameplay and you can have fun watching it in years four and beyond we can recruit to our prestige level so hopefully if we're at least a two-star program by this point we can go after two stars if we defy the odds if we become a three-star program you can go after three stars JUCOs and transfers are now allowed as long as they meet your prestige threshold. And a fun little wrinkle that you had in here, every road win will unlock that state for recruiting. Yeah, man. So we have our region. We're all in the Great Lakes region with Michigan here. As an example, if Lake Huron goes on the road and beats San Jose State, we can now recruit California. However, this will only take effect in year four. Now, if we beat them in year three, perhaps, it will carry over into year four. So we won't be able to really take credit for it until year four begins. I highly doubt that in year one or year two that we will win on the road. But if it happens, you know, we don't want to just open up the floodgates into different states when you're still such a young and bad program. So, yes, to your point, year four is when this begins. Now... Unlimited patron prospects can be signed year four and beyond. Nerfing no longer is required. So if you are a 75 patron prospect, that's what you're gonna be if you come over here. However, Lake Huron, Southern Michigan, can only sign two 
prospects, 70 plus overall, unless their team prestige allows for those prospects to be recruited, which goes back to the very first dash here. We have to recruit to the prestige level. If your player, your patron player, is a four-star wide receiver, and we're a three-star program, we can get two of you. We can get two four-star wide receivers as patrons. We can't get three because your player has a four-star rating. We are a three-star rating. So we can grab patrons, but we can't get extra. We can't get more than two if they're above our prestige level. And maybe by year eight, if we're a five-star program, then we can recruit anybody that we want. So that's kind of how we get to earn it. And that's really the whole premise of this is we want to earn the right to be able to get those good players to our program. You do it by a timeline. You do it by these flaky little rules. I mean, anybody can cheese NCAA. We don't want that to happen. Now, another little wrinkle. We got a bunch of wrinkles going on here. You came up with this idea. In-game challenges. So episode three onward, regular season games will present a challenge for user teams. Yeah, if you guys have seen our other series, we like to introduce randomness to our series. We, ha we have the wheel spin that you guys all know and love. And we have some wacky challenges, okay? We have like option only challenge. We have your quarterback gets injured. You gotta play the backup quarterback this day. You got your wide receivers complaining. He wants the football. You gotta throw it to him 20 times. So we have those types of challenges. Whatever the wheel decides, that's the challenge of the day. However, the challenge is optional. If we decide that we would be better off just playing the game, that's our prerogative. Now, if we do complete the challenge though, we will be awarded 10 challenge points, which can be used on any custom recruit, any custom player. So these 10 points are gonna be distributed one point per attribute. So if you had 10 points and you were gonna use it on a custom quarterback, you can't up his accuracy by 10. You could up his accuracy by one, awareness by one, throw power by one, Speed. and so on and so forth. Yeah. As long as you're using 10 distributed out through all of the attributes, then you're fine. Just can't apply all of them to one attribute. One of the fan favorite things about our Big 12 series that we did a few years ago was the renaming ceremony for CPU generated players that end up going to one of our teams. We did this with the ACU Spartans. We did live streams where the community could come on in and throw out some really funny names or really cool names and names that we ended up picking and liking to take over CPU generated players. We're gonna be doing this with Alpina. Yeah, we don't really want people named Tom Smith. No offense if your name's Tom Smith. Or uh, Kaliki Rankin was one that was mm -hmm. from our previous series. We don't like those names. You guys can come up with better names than that. Okay, if you can do better than Lee Lumpkin, <laughs> we want to hear from you and we call it freshman orientation it's more of a hazing ritual actually when you sign on to Alpino they force you to change your name mm -hmm. if you want to play football here so we'll have discretion we can even mix names if somebody gives us a good first name and a great last name we can combine them but that yeah. way it gives you guys a, a bit of a stake in the bad guy of the series so we're looking forward to that that's always a lot of fun and also will be on live streams that's correct, and you guys will know that well in advance of when those live streams will be. They always will be in the off-season portion of this. So before we get into the season, before we start the next season, you gotta be able to rename the players once they've signed with your football club. We have some exciting news. Team Builder Store is back up and running. Well, it had been running. We had Ardmore, some Big 12 teams up there, but now we've refreshed it here to focus on the MAC. We've got Ohio Western, we've got Michigan, we've got everybody in here, man. Lake Huron. Now, just as a guide for you guys, what you see on that main page is not all the products that are available to you if you do want to purchase this. This obviously goes to us. This helps us monetarily. And it's a little kind of a thank you. I think they're kind of cool. It's about the logos, really. That's what it's about. Yeah. If you want to rep the merch. But just click on the logo here that you see. Like, that's not all the product that we have for the team. You can click on this for Lake Huron, this t-shirt here different color options and then of course you got the pillow there you got the sticker so there's yeah. different products associated with that design yeah that, that and we do have it set basically as affordable as we can get it so i hope you guys check it out if you're into that kind of stuff maybe 
once you grow attached to the teams, maybe you'll want something, but, you know, the Robins have a orange sweater and the cream shirt, so mm -hmm. it's like, it's a good look for the Robins. Well, what stunk about this is that something on, like, Teespring, sometimes they don't give you the colors that directly match. Like, for Ohio Western's red, this one was perfect, but on their t-shirt, it's a little bit darker, so... But we'd really appreciate you guys checking it out. And if you find something you like, please consider making a purchase. It actually does help us, and we would be grateful for that. So thank you in advance. So any final thoughts about our series going on here? I'm excited about this thing. I hope you guys are too. What are your thoughts? What do you think is going to happen with this? Are we going to be able to break the curse? We've, we're using a really tough slider set. Well, I don't know. I mean, you see our overall is a 46. So I doubt that it's going to do us any good. But when I look at the Mac East, Alpina is the big dog. Or the big llama, <laughs> big alpaca here. Yep. And I think Kent State can push them a little bit, but not much. Southern Michigan, you're 50, so you are a little bit better than me. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. And I'm actually surprised the 48 offense, our better players are on offense. So I'm actually, I'm surprised that, you no, know, it's a four point overall difference, but a 52 on defense, it's better than our overall rating. You know, law of averages here, but dang, I. I thought our defense was going to be absolutely terrible in rating, but I we're not going to win a game. You, you don't think so? No, we're not going to win a game. Now, Ohio Western, 86 overall. I think they should win the MAC West, but, mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the MAC West, and it is, I guess, quote-unquote, stacked. I don't want to say stacked, but... It's all for, relative. For a mid-major, for a non bcs -er, for a group of five... It's, you know, Central, Western, NIU, and Toledo. They might have a tougher test than Alpina would, but yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we can look at the East one more time here for Alpina, but they get Kent State, Akron, Bowling Green, Ohio, Buffalo, U. I mean, it's... That's a cakewalk. It's pretty much a cakewalk. And yeah. the MAC East is usually way up for grabs. You never know which team is going to win it. It usually comes down to experience in the MAC East. I'll say that. But Alpina has the experience and the talent to kick some tail. The cool thing about college football revamp, by the way, we noticed this. Most of our guys are two-star prestige. That's not correct. Okay, that's not correct. No, those are the teams that we took over. They all had two stars. So they, right. they have been since changed. We're obviously one stars. We should be negative one stars, but <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we are a one star program. So just wanted to be transparent about that. Well, that is it for the introduction video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. What teams are you gonna be rooting for? What jersey sets do you think are really cool? What's your favorite? And of course, I gotta ask the question, what players did you notice in the roster reveal that you're looking to follow? Definitely Nicodemus Bloodsaw for me. <laughs> no but, bias there, of course. Yeah, but there's some good players spread out around the conference and you know, I am also looking forward to hearing feedback on the jerseys. Mm -hmm. Those took a lot of time. You got to mod those. They don't just—they don't just come to you. You got to mod them. We did all the modding ourselves. We've been we did working. have some tutorials and some helping. Definitely but... help from the college football revamp Discord. Yes, people. Yes. And, but yeah, it is time consuming. I mean, so we've we were... been working on this since February, yeah. January. So, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long time in the making, dude. I hope you guys enjoy it. It has been so hard for me to see comments fly in and basically people saying that they're kind of frustrated we haven't done a college football thing. And like, I, I, I want to tell you, but I can't. <laughs> I want to tell you what we were doing and what we were planning to do, but I just couldn't. We would have loved to do a 12-teamer, but with this hard modding thing, like Dude. that, it's hard. It's hard to do. So yep. Just imagine. I mean, settle for four. It, <laughs> yeah, it's just a just a... Third. We're settled. Just yeah. a third of we're it. Settled. We're slipping. Yep. We're, we're, we're losing our game here. All right, guys, that's it. Leave a like if you like this thing. I can't wait to bring more of this content to you starting on Wednesday. Wednesday. Next week, Wednesday, will be week number one of college football action. Back here on the channel. Can't wait for it. Guys, post comments in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on the league. What? Let me know what your thoughts are on the series. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Leave a like if you like this thing. As always, thanks for watching and peace.